the Flyers and Canadiens in goal tonight. The seventh winningest goaltender of all time. He's in Montreal's goal. He's Andy Mould. The elder statesman among goaltenders in the NHL. Andy might not <laughs> like us talking about that a lot. 25 stars, 914 save percentage. Andy Moog has done terrific things for the Montreal Canadiens this year. And at the other end of the ice, Ron Hextall, 12th year in the league, 923, 921 save percentage. He is having his best statistical year ever in this 12th year. Referee tonight is Bill McCreary, our linesman Brian Murphy, and Pierre Rassico, and we are set to go. Opening faceoff as Vincent Damfus, the captain of the Canadiens, and Eric Lindros, the captain of the Flyers. Underway from Philadelphia here on ESPN2. Glad you could be with us. Rolled in on. And Moog will leave it there for his defense. Kintal off the pass off the sideboards, and the Canadiens able to come out at center. Brian Savage will throw in. Savage out there with Damfus and Martin Ruchinski, Stefan Kintal, and Vladimir Malikov on defense. Here's the Flyers' first opportunity. Lindros lets it go. Now the centering pass through the crease. It's Lindros out with Brindamore and Klatt. And they start on defense with Yanni Niedema and Peter Svoboda. Back inside the Philadelphia zone, here's Brindamore now at center for the Flyers. Brindamore will slap in, Flyers go for a change. Steve, I think in a nutshell here, this game will be whether Philadelphia will be able to establish their power game down low or will the Montreal Canadiens be able to get their speed game low. Here's Recky trying to get some of that speed work. He throws it around the boards. Kept in deep by Scott Thornton out on this line now. Chance from the angle, shut right on. Hextall, his first stop, he's in the hockey game. LeClaire out at center, his speed just off the stick of Alexander Daig, who has struggled offensively in his first five games as a Philadelphia Flyer. Just one assist, he got that in his first game as a Flyer. Daig is taken out of the ice by Dave Manson. Centering pass right through the crease, and Patrick Poulin the other way for the Canadiens. Here's Thornton now off his stick. He was tied up by two men, and the Flyers bang it right to center. I like it when two teams have sort of different styles, and you have to see who can do what. Uh, Montreal can't compete against the size and the physical play of the Flyers, so they have to stick to their game plan and, and be fast. And Philadelphia can play a pretty decent skating game, but it's not really the real game. Canadians doing the four-check here and trying to cycle down low. Brunet throws it down a little deeper. Centering pass shot. Might have hit the post there. And he'll come back out to center. Best opportunity of the first two minutes to Montreal. Canadiens at center. Off for Sebastian Bordelow. Back in the lineup for the Canadiens. Slaps it in. Hextall will leave it there for Chris Joseph in the lineup tonight. He has been out and scratched the last six games, but he's back in tonight. No Shell Samuelson, no Paul Coffey tonight on the flyer blue line. At the Montreal line, Greg Rouve up ahead. Montreal will just throw in Mick Lakota scratched last game one of the recent additions to the Montreal Canadiens but he's in the lineup they had some of that tough guy presence here in Philadelphia it's been cleared again to center ice you think they're expecting Philadelphia to maybe be in a bad mood after they get pounded six to one by the Islanders the other way centering shot stopped by Dan Lacroix the shot and T rather Moog makes the stop there and now we have a fight here it is Mick Makota and Dan Cordick going at it. Cordick in white, Makota in red. Well, it was just a kind of a casual bump. It didn't take very much to tee things off here. Mick Makota is here for a reason. And the Philadelphia Flyers want to get their game plan established early on. Pick it up here on the replay. Good solid body check, that's all it was. A little how do you do back holding of the sticks. Korda came in afterwards, and penalties for both sides. Makota has a job to do here for the Canadiens, and Al Morgani has a job to do for us, Al. Well, thanks a lot, Steve. You know, we're coming up quickly on the Olympics where you won't see a lot of that stuff. And you know, there was a lot of controversy about some names left off the Canadian Olympic team. You all know about Marc Messier. Another guy left off, Marc Recchi. There's now a good chance that Marc Recchi will be on that Olympic team. I talked to Bob Clark earlier. In addition to being GM in the Flyers, he's GM of Team Canada. And if Trevor Linden cannot play by next Monday, if he can't skate, Mark 
Mark Recchi will be the man who replaces Linden on that Canadian Olympic team. He's a little worried about talking about it. He really thought he should have been on that team originally, but if he does make it, that's a guy who's really earned that Maple Leaf, Brian. Yeah, he sure has. And I talked to him a little bit too, Al, as you did before the game. He doesn't even want to think about it. He was so disappointed the first time around. He doesn't want to be disappointed that second time. You can't blame him for that. Here's Mark after his first shift. Hey, guys, come on. My shift's over. Open. Open somebody. There we go. Another slap in the face. First can't make the Olympic team. <laughs> he's had a heck of a year. I mean, he's a good, solid player. Mark Recchi has really uh, changed his game over the last couple of years. And they've become a good, solid two-way player. There you see the penalties. And Kordick did pick up the extra penalty. Two minutes for instigating and the 10-minute misconduct that goes along with it at 251 so power play is on for the Canadiens and that provides an interesting matchup Montreal's power play is number one in the NHL on the road Philadelphia's penalty killing is number one in the NHL on home ice so yep see the best of the best here. yeah but the problem for Montreal has been their 0 for 14 in their last four games they haven't really got it going but you're right they've been a very good consistent power play all season long especially on the road Martin Ruchinski now down low for Montreal. There's Vincent Damfus. He's tripped up by Terrian. That allows Brindamore to get to it. He's able to clear. Lindros has. He'll go some more times. He throws back into his own zone. And Terrian rifles it down the ice. Nearly too many men. Not nearly. In fact, they caught him. They threw it right towards the Canadiens bench. And too many men against Montreal will be the call. That will even things up. Yeah, Bill McCurry didn't even hesitate there. Ellen Vigneault pretty upset. It's a it's a close call, but this was definitely a penalty. I think it was Patrick Poulin who jumped over the bench, stuck his foot out when he saw the puck being shot down the ice right near him. And uh, it ends up with too many guys on the ice. Two, four, there's... Here's the shot coming from the Philadelphia zone. There's the man coming ice. He, as he kicked his foot out to the left, that was Patrick Poulin. Way too many guys on the ice. You could see six in the frame right there, and there was another guy off to the side. So that quickly evens things up. Well, Alan Vigneault has done a really good job this year. For tonight, this game against uh, the Philadelphia Flyers, his team's going to have to be physical in front of their own net, and they're going to have to establish their speed game. Their speed is the most important part, but if they're not going to be willing to bang heads with the Lindros and the Leclerc and those guys in front of Andy Volk, they will not win. Turner Stevenson will sit out the two minutes for the bench minor there as we are four aside now for the next minute. And then I'll have a mini power play by Philadelphia. Brisebois' pass is a good one. On stride, here come the Canadiens. Shot right on, and Hextall made the stop. Ron Hextall looking confident. He was well out of his crease to make that stop. Got a piece of that one as well, knocked it over the net, and has flipped around the boards and will come out. Flyers looking to break with Alexander Dig. He's cut off, though, by Manson. With four on four and lots of extra ice out there, Mark Recchi and the Canadians did a good job on that last breakout, establishing their speed and the gave Poulin that chance on that. Zubras battling behind the net with Brisebois now. Brisebois down, Manson gets to it, comes up for Yanni Ninema, who's trying to hold the zone. Able to do so, at least momentarily, and it's deflected out to center. There'll be two keys for the Flyers in handling that speed. You have to have a guy back helping you. One of the forwards have to be back. But the Philadelphia defensemen have to constantly be counting up players. Where is everybody, and who is the fastest man on the ice? Because the fastest man on the ice always gets the puck sooner or later. Niedema on the touch-up for icing. Three seconds remaining on the Flyer penalty, and Philadelphia will have a power play for 47 seconds. We're scoreless early. Thanks for seeing Barry Melrose coming up on NHL tonight, immediately following our game. Flyers win the draw deep inside the Montreal zone. Now trying to work it down a little bit deeper. Penalty is over, so the Flyers do have a power play for some 40 seconds. Ninema just got to it and not uh, unable to hold the zone, and it travels all the way down. Hextall will leave it there. The Flyers will set up their power play. Philadelphia comes in with the sixth best unit in the NHL. But it's only a mini power play. We won't see the full effects of it, and especially not now because they're offside at the Montreal Blue Line. That ought to make Wayne Cashman happy. Yeah, well, he wasn't very happy last night. 35-minute meeting, as you mentioned at the start of the game, uh, after that 6-1 drubbing by the Islanders last night. He's a patient guy, but he was also a pretty fiery player, and you know he's going to be a fiery coach at time. Keys for the Flyers tonight, control their emotions. In other words, get them in the right direction and control the tempo of the game. And again, that goes back to establishing their game as opposed to Montreal's speed game. And John LeClaire, talking to him, this is the power play for the Philadelphia Flyers. John LeClaire already has as many power play goals and points 
as he had all last season. I asked him if he knew that. He said, no, I had no idea. Hard hit by LeClaire. Flattens Malakov, but it comes out to center. 13 seconds left in this power play. It's Brindamore, LeClaire, and Lindros. Three 20-goal scorers. The Flyers are the only team in the NHL that can say that. In fact, no other team even has two of them. Well, they're so good on the power play. In general, their power play is so much better. There's LeClaire. That's one of the reasons, because they're aggressive. Coaches go crazy on power plays if you stand back and wait for the other team to come back and give you the puck. They're not going to do it. 17 goals in 14 games against the Montreal Canadiens. John LeClaire has scored more against Montreal since the trade here than any other team in the National Hockey Boy, He shouldn't be angry at being traded to Philadelphia. It's the best thing ever happened to his career, but he certainly takes it out on the Canadiens every single time he plays against them. And we'll see what happens here tonight. At center, here's Montreal. It's a two-on-one. Set up, shot, stopped. Not the shot that they wanted. Turner Stevenson just barely got it off. It rolled off his stick. Hextall made the stop, and the net was knocked off. A moment ago, I talked about the Philly defense having to read the, the Montreal players and read the speed. They didn't read this situation. Turner Stevenson came out of the penalty box, and nobody read him. So it ends up a two-on-one situation. By the time they do, it's too late. There's Stevenson coming into the bottom of your screen. Gets a really nice pass. He just happened to miss the move as he went in on Ronnie Hextall. But by the time Philadelphia had uh, realized that Turner Stevenson was coming in from that side, there was nothing they could do about it. They have to do a better job than that. Ron Hextall did play last night. He wasn't expected to play. He wound up playing in the third period of that awful 6-1 loss to the Islanders. Allowed two goals on 10 shots after Garth Snow was bombed. He gave up four goals, Garth Snow, on 15 shots in the first two periods. And Hexley was outstanding. You see the first minute or two he was in there, he made four, five, six spectacular saves. Ziggy had the hat trick last night for the Islanders who desperately needed a victory. It, it they was, had it last night. Yeah, well, it was their night last night, no doubt. Here's a chance for Philadelphia now. Karam back behind the net. Zuber's trying to get something on it. He's checked by Popovic, comes back to the point. That shot blocked by Popovic, who went down. Down. And it carries out to the corner. Poulin will throw it in deeper for Craig Rouve. And the Canadians look to come out. Pass at center. On the stick of Mark Recchi. Recchi out there with Thornton. Throws deeper for Thornton now. He's crunched by Terrian. And Poulin gets to it. Centering pass for Recchi. Pass from the angle. Shot right on. Hextall able to make that stop as well. Thornton gets to it now. Again checked by Terry and Recchi will come over and get possession of the puck. Goes cross from Manson. Let's it go. He scores! One that Ron Hextall surely will want back. A knuckleball from Dave Manson. Hextall got a piece of it, but not enough. It popped over him and into the net. Canadiens on the board. Montreal a 1-0 lead. This one just fooled Ron Hextall somehow. Manson, Manson just one times it, but he's well back by the blue line and wide. And it appears that Hextall had a clear view, but that one just, I think he must have changed his mind. I mean, I can't read his mind. It came right at his head, but you could see how hesitant he was with his glove hand and how he handled it. He finally just sort of defended himself, tried to fend the puck off, only got a piece of it, rolls up and over his shoulder, 1-0 Montreal. And it's unfair, but you know Morganti's radio station. They're going to be all they're going to be talking about now is the bad goal Ron Hextall let in. Al, the uh, morning host on uh, the Sports Talk radio station WIP in Philadelphia, and it's really unfair. You mentioned at the top, Ron Hextall is having a career year to this point. It is 12th NHL season. He's been staring in the face of it ever since the playoffs last year. The, the, the press has not let him alone, and he's responded with a career year. But every time there's a goal like that against Ron Hextall, you bet people start talking right away. He's never going to get away from it, Steve, until he wins the Stanley Cup. There's no doubt. Delayed penalty will go against Montreal. The Flyers' power play when we come back. Left of your screen, Benoit Brunet in the penalty box, two for interference. Montreal can't afford to give the Philadelphia Flyers too many power plays. But when the guy doesn't have the puck, you can't pull back. That could have been hooking, could have been holding. Benoit Brunet didn't want to let his guy get away from him. He was looking at the referee right away, cut dead to right. Flyers go to the power play, and they'll look to even things up. For Dave Manson, it's his fourth goal of the season from Recchi and Thornton. Even strength at 640. For Manson, his first goal since October 12th against St. Louis. Now shorthanded. Ruchinski the opportunity. Malakov's shot goes wide of the net, and Karam's out, and see if Philly can break. As it's thrown inside, Andy Moog pretends to play it. Never touched it. 
and they'll bring it back down. Two line pass the call. Let's go back to Al Morgani. Al. Well, thanks, Steve. You mentioned it. The fans here, they have their reason already if the Flyers do not win the Stanley Cup, and that is the reason right there. Ron Hextall, yeah, they'll be all over him for that goal tomorrow morning. He's the most fascinating character. I've lived in this market for 15 years now. The fans love Ron Hextall on one hand. The way he, he, he puts on a show, tapping those crossbars like that, and he always makes a total effort. Garth Snow comes in. He, helped, he didn't help him in the playoffs last year against Detroit. But they're afraid Hextall is going to give up the softball like that, and that's why they want Curtis Joseph by the trade deadline. Guys? All right, Al, thanks. Al Morgani, Philadelphia's favorite son, joining us here at the Four State Center. 1 0 Montreal. Power play time. Less than a minute and a half left on the man advantage for the Flyers. Montreal just sent it down and the ice. I admire Ron Hextall a lot, the way he handled things in the playoffs last year and ever since then, really. And the guy has a tremendous intestinal fortitude as far as I'm concerned. Very few people could stand up to what he's been subjected to over the last year or so. Fans can be really merciless, and especially the goaltenders. Battle for it to the right of Andy Moog, who knows something about that as well. Lindros, cross ice pass. Needham lets the rocket go. Stopped by Moog and cleared. Montreal did a good job down in front of the head of boxing out John LeClaire. He could not get any rebound there. LeClaire nearly got to that one. They tried to catch Montreal on a change. And we get a whistle. Rangers and Sharks, Mondays. Worth staying up late night in the East at 10.30 p.m. here on the news. There's Big John LeClaire was out there on that power play situation, but didn't was not allowed, rather, to get any rebound. It's tough to box that guy out, but you have to do it. Body position is everything against LeClaire because he's so big and strong. 44 seconds left in the man advantage for Philadelphia. Set it up. And Alexander Dega looked to move it ahead. He's checked by Poulin, and Poulin forces him to lose it, but Grattan sweeps it in. Trent Platt getting some PP time, and he's checked up against the glass, as is Daig. And the Canadiens get to it and able to clear. Here's Poulin, thought about going in for the rush, and elected to kill some more clock and send it back down. Craig Rive fires into the flyer zone. Terry in for Philadelphia. His pass is picked off by Damfus. Penalty kill here by Montreal. And Montreal is very dangerous when they're a man short, especially these two guys. Damfus and Ruchinski work extremely well together, and when they get the puck, even shorthanded, they'll be looking to score. Canadians have seven shorthanded goals for this season, fifth most in the NHL. Flyers show absolutely nothing on this power play. Brunet out of the box. We're back to five aside. One nothing Canadians leading the Flyers on Dave Manson's first goal since the first month of the season. Steve Levy, Brian Engblom, Al Morgani from Philadelphia. Glad you could be with us on this Thursday night here on ESPN2. Flipped in by the Flyers. Moog had just enough to knock it away. Quintal back by him. Manette throws the check. Hucks free. Sean Podine in the battle with Savage now. Worked free, and Podine has it. Comes away. Looking for someone to center it to. Colin Forbes is back behind the net. They whack away at it, and Quintal comes away from Montreal. Pass for Savage, didn't see it. That allows the Flyers to get possession at center. And Philadelphia will slam it right back in. Turner Stevenson, one of the few guys that is going to go out there and throw his body weight around for Montreal. You have to have at least a couple of guys. Nick Fakota, of course, newly acquired from Tampa, is another one. When those guys do get ice time, they have to go out there and register some hits. Mark Bureau will throw in for Montreal. Hextall scoots it away from Bordelow. And here's Prindamore for the Flyers. Good pass on the stick of Lindros now, trying to use the speed and strength. Centered in front and worked as a shot, and Moog had to be ready, and he'll hang on. Well, the newest Philadelphia Flyer is Alexander Degg. They acquired him recently from the uh, Ottawa Senators, and they got him because of his outside speed. You want to use him on that right wing side? He has the ability, he was from the 93 entry draft. You can see both he and Chris Gratton in this game here tonight. Pretty interesting list of players, all of them big players in the National Hockey League. He was traded for Falloon, who had been a healthy scratch in 10 games, and Vinny Prospo, who was an excellent prospect, but it had two broken bones in the last two years, and Chris Gratton had really cut into his ice time. They've kind of taken a flyer a little bit, no pun intended, <laughs> on Dag. But uh, he's got the talent, and he's going to be a really interesting young man, which I think people in the States don't know a lot about yet. They haven't seen him play a lot because he played on Ottawa. He's got uh, quite a personality. He's got a little bit of an edge to him, uh, and he's certainly got a lot of confidence, too, but he's well-spoken. It'll be interesting to watch his development here with the Flyers. 
inside the Montreal zone now. Brindamore on the forecheck. There's Dag. He's taken out of the play. Allows Brisebois to get to it. Aaron Pass, though. Flyers just able to hold his own. Brindamore thought about letting it go. And thought about a pass as well. Back for Swoboda. They were a bit too close. And it pops back out to center. Brindamore will go back to chase for the Flyers. 8.40 to go here in the first. 1-0 Montreal. Greg Rive in his own zone. In front of his own net. Works it out ahead to center. Here's Stevenson. Hextall whaps, whacks it around the boards. Recchi on the four check there as he's also checked by Leclerc. And it comes out to center. It's a three on two Philadelphia. Here's Leclerc. Centering pass off for Dague and he couldn't handle it. Montreal will break three on two the other way. Here we go. Centering pass shot. He just went off the outside of the net. Off the shot from Patrick Poole, and we go end to end. Here are the Flyers breaking. Leclerc play is broken up there by Scott Thornton and Recky racing, and finally a two-line pass. There's something we don't see too often. Coast to coast, back and forth. One nothing. Canadians have the lead. 8:01 to play here in the first. Another look at Alexander Daig, now of the Flyers, formerly of the Senators. We asked him before the game about the difference playing for the two clubs. The style of play was more, way, way more defensive. Uh, you are here, you got those stars. You know, you got Leclerc, Lindros, one of the two best players in the league. So obviously, you know, production is going to go up, so that's the good thing. Uh, the big thing to adjust is, uh, you know, going through the trap. You know, it's all trap, trap, trap in Ottawa. Going to a really offensive and just defensive mind in here. Uh, it's not just offensive, but you know, just to get in movement and to play with those big guys, you know, they, they kind of skate really well, so you got to follow them. All different kinds of pressures, right? More pressure on being the man in Ottawa or more pressure being here in Philadelphia in a winning situation where you don't have to be the guy or the third or fourth guy? Oh, he's in a much better situation uh, right now, and I think Al Barganti has got a comment on that right now. Al? with his game. I think uh, Alexander Dag Bryan is going to have a rough time with his type of game. If he doesn't get points and get them pretty quickly, I think the fans will turn on him. They don't like that finesse game without a lot of banging here. we have already seen his style of play. I think he's hurting some line mates at this point. He has to learn the system. If he does end up on Lindros's line, I think Eric Lindros will throttle him if he doesn't start going to the net and playing the way the Flyers like to play the game. It was a real risk on him. There is some upside, but from what I've seen so far, he really has to change his style or get the hands and finish off or he's going to hear the booze in Philly. Yeah, I, I agree uh, with you there, Al. That's an in interesting take, and it will be guys like Lindros who are going to, I think, help get him in line. But I think there was more pressure on him in Ottawa than there is here, at least right now. This kid has been through an awful lot. He's not even 23 years old yet. He'll be 23 years old in about a week or so. This is his fifth year in the NHL, and he's been flat out called a bust after having been the first uh, pick overall in 93 and not having the numbers to show it. So uh, there is pressure on him, but I think he's a pretty happy man right now. I would think so, too. We mentioned it earlier, just one assist in his first five games here with the Flyers. And that came his debut, so pointless in his last four. And he's expected to produce offensively. And these Philadelphia fans are tough sports fans. All sports, especially the Flyers, I think. And uh, I agree with Al. He'll hear it very shortly. But he's not to put together some points. Yeah, but I think they'll be patient with Dick. They have to. He's going to get more scoring chances. He's a little uptight right now. He's had breakaways in the first couple of games. He had a scoring chance here tonight already. But once it's, you know, once the gate's open, he was a goal scorer. Hopefully that touch will come back. Just a similar Chris Gratton situation. Yeah. They gave him some space here, and the fans didn't get on him, and they were patient, and that's worked out pretty well now as Gratton is coming. Centering pass. Canadians couldn't get to it. And it's back behind the net. Here's Trent Klatt for Philadelphia now. Klatt hits the red line. He's all by himself as his teammates went for a change. Now he's first in the food check. Moog swings it around. Comes up for Ruchinski now. And here comes Savage for Montreal. Ryan Savage, drop pass for Downfoos. Another drop pass, shot right on. Big kick stop by Hextall off the shot from Patrice Brisebois. Montreal's doing a good job here of establishing their game. They've got the tempo of the game in their hand. Philadelphia has to get it back. Brindamore here. Shifts at the blue line. And let's see. Looks like another penalty was called. They got it for too many men again, Brian? I think so, because you know, let's, Bill McCreary was looking over at the Philadelphia bench. Right now, there's only five guys on for Philadelphia, but there was a lot of commotion going on. Bill McCreary motioned to the, to the Philadelphia bench right away. 
And during that last shift, Eric Lindros has lost his glove. He loses his glove in his own zone. As he comes up the ice, watch what happens. Here he gets it ripped right off, and watch when he goes to the bench. Look how good is this. Right on. He catches it on the fly, goes right down, and gets right back into the play. Hardly misses a beat. But during all that stuff going on, the referee started looking over, and I'm not quite sure what the call was. Brian, it was. Too many men on the ice. I, I can't remember the last time I saw that. Too many men, two too many men on the ice penalties in less than 10 minutes. That's embarrassing for the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, yeah that's true. And it, they, they got to be careful. I mean, they're getting to a situation where we're taking some silly penalties. Philadelphia got into that a little bit too much last night against the Islanders, a team that they, uh, they struggle against on Long Island, and they end up losing the game 6-1. to one. They took some foolish penalties. Nobody can afford foolish penalties no matter how good you are. And Montreal, as I said, has established their game pretty well now. they got to be careful that they don't undo themselves. It's one thing to get beat by your opponent, but you don't want to give them any ammunition in doing it. Roughly, how many too many men on the ice penalties do you think a team gets in a full season? Ten, maybe? Between five and ten, maybe? How about two in ten minutes of one game? Well, it happens, especially if you're mixing up lines and trying to match, and especially on the road when you don't get the last change. Let's see how the Philadelphia power play does here. They were not effective in their last opportunity. Sent back behind Lynette. Grattan gets to it. Centering pass for Desjardins. It looked like it hopped over his stick and back out to center. Chris Joseph was there and threw it towards the Montreal bench as they were changing again. Well, wouldn't that have been something? Broken up. Here's a chance. Short-handed. Wachinski's got a lane. Let's it go. And the save by Hextall. And every time there's a turnover, Montreal gets it with speed and is really putting pressure on that Philadelphia defense. And a whistle for the two-line pass. ABC Washington, number nine, UCLA. Martin Ruchinski is a very talented guy, and he's got great speed. He comes from behind, he gets the puck teed up for him, and he goes in, that's an excellent scoring chance. And again, the Philadelphia defense forced to recover and barely keep him off the score sheet. Minute 13 left in the man advantage for Philadelphia. The Flyers throw in. Brindamore gets to it. And a look to set it up. It is Brindamore, Leclerc, and Lindros. Minima and Svoboda. cross ice pass for Svoboda, couldn't handle. Lindros gets to it now. Ping pongs back to him. Quintal from Montreal trying to clear. Damfus in on the battle along the ball boards. And it comes up for Ninema. Off for Brindamore's. Players are all bunched together. You want to get some separation, I would think, on the power play. And finally they do. Ninema back for Svoboda. Off for Lindros. Put it in his skates, and Eric couldn't handle. Comes back from Montreal. Damfus able to clear and hear the boos from the Philadelphia crowd come raining down on the Flyers. Yeah, Montreal's got them where they want them now because they've got control of the tempo, as I said, and they've got Philadelphia back on their heels. Trying to create something on the power play when you're not on top of your game is difficult, and that's what brings the fans down on it. Here's Brendamore, center for Leclerc from the angle. Trying to go across for Lindros. It was deflected away. Comes back for Nienema. Off for Terry and lets it go. That two is blocked by Reve. And Nienema just just able to hold the zone. Leclerc down low. Two seconds left for man advantage. As they battle, Lindros is put on top of the net. Power play is over. Back to five aside, but the Flyers continue to have possession of the puck down low. Here's Lindros. Took a look before he passed. Gets to Terry and throws cross. And Recchi will get to it. And the Canadiens come out. Again, the Flyers hearing it from this crowd. Drop pass. Stevenson shot. Glove save by Hextall. Looks like Hextall gave him the whole glove side and then flashed out the glove to make the stop. 1-0 Habs. Turner Stevenson with his second real good scoring chance in this game. Gets the drop pass. Look at Desjardins fall down. Turner Stevenson had already buried his head, unfortunately. Right there, you can see he was looking down. He didn't realize that Desjardins had fallen down. He could have walked it down all the way to Ron Hextall, who ended up making a terrific glove save. Shots are 9-5 in favor of Montreal. The one goal of the game was a bad goal. Hexto would love to have back the stick of knuckleball from Dave Manson. Hexto knocks that one aside. It's Valerie Bure. He's checked by Grattan in the corner. And the Flyers move it out ahead. Under four to go here in this first period now. Been impressed by the Canadians' defensive coverage in their zone. That one centered shot. Stopped. What a save by Andy Moog off the stick of Chris Gratton. And just as you said that, I mean, that was an instant hex, Steve. You couldn't have done it any quicker than that. A blown coverage completely. 
As Philadelphia got a free one right from the slot area. Gratton all alone against Andy Moog. Andy Moog with a terrific save there. The Canadians come in certainly shorthanded. A really offensively handicapped, I think it's safe to say. They are without their second and third leading scorers, Saku Koivu and Shane Corson. Of course, they're without Igor Ulanov as well. This is his first game. Ulanov went for a big hit there, and it led to an Anson Carter goal for Boston. And then you see Shane Corson down on the ice. Right there, Corson also in the game against the Bruins. Corson also was injured in about three minutes of All-Star game time. And there you see, without Koivu and Corson, the Ulanov thing is really awful. You only got to play like 12 minutes in a Canadian's uniform. That shot right on, stopped by Moog again. Andy Moog hasn't seen a whole lot of action, but he's been ready and able when he has. Chris Joseph just wristed that one towards Andy Moog. There was traffic in front, and it was a big save, very difficult save for Andy Moog. Just basic hockey off the faceoff, a good draw won by the Flyers. Chris Joseph just threw it there. Yeah, you're right. Talking about Ulanov and the Montreal defense, Ulanov would have, was a good pickup for Montreal. They needed his toughness. They would dearly have loved to play him against uh, Eric Lindros in this game. But he is gone for the rest of the season. Big blow for them. MCL, medial collateral ligament, ACL, anterior cruciate ligament of the left knee, both blown out on the collision. Ulanov and Peter Popovic, his teammate, handing insult. You saw the Anson Carter goal right off that. Yeah, and, and doing it when you hit your own teammate, too. You go for the big hit, you end up crashing into Popovic. Man, what a way to go. Probably want to impress the home fans. You know, you go out of your way. Well, that's the way he game. hits, though, too. I mean, he runs the people, but maybe Popovic wasn't aware or never heard or saw him coming, and that's what happened. He was the key player, I thought, in that deal with the Tampa Bay Lightning. It included Stefan Riche going the other way in Tampa Bay. Right. At center, Klatt is checked. And the Flyers just flip it into the Montreal zone now, and Philadelphia will go for a change. Here's Stefan Quintal. Under three minutes to go in the first period. Pretty even hockey game. Montreal has the lone goal, and it was a bad one. Well, Philadelphia got waxed 6-1 to one last night, and Wayne Cashman in the third period was very quick to shake up all his lines, and why not? They weren't down 6-1 to one at the time. I believe it was something like 4-1 to one at the time, but that's what coaches have to do. He had to get something going, and I'm sure it wasn't pleasant in the locker room in between periods. Uh, he is a patient man, as I said before the game, but he was a fiery, fiery player, and you know that that fire comes out as a coach as well. Cash said in talking about tonight's game, he said, hey, good hockey clubs bounce back. I expect a great effort. Hasn't really seen that tonight as his team trails by a score of 1-0. They see the numbers in the last eight at home. Coincidentally, Montreal's unbeaten their last eight on the road, so pretty interesting matchup here tonight in Philadelphia. Well, good teams always have to respond. There's no doubt. You're not going to win them all, and every once in a while, you are going to get tasted. And, and coaches sit back. Everybody sits back and watches how you react. They certainly have to react well here against this Montreal team, who is off to a good start in this first period. Cashman said, no team commitment. That was the quote after last night's game. Again, it's a players-only meeting following the game. Shot, centering pass. Moe make the stop. It was good coverage there, and even better offensive effort by Dinah Zubris. Well, there's plenty more National Hockey League action for you, including Korea, mostly more than Korea. On Chelios, you'll we'll see what develops Sunday night. Yeah, it's really interesting to watch those two in particular. Korea, uh, Korea has a lot of trouble against Chelios. There you see the effort. Zubris fighting through the check. And Montreal had everyone tied up, and Zubris fought through it. Shot deflected on goal, and Moog will cover that one up as sticks are raised in front of that Montreal net. The players will separate, and that allows us to check in with Bill Peter. All right, Bill, thanks. Bill Peter, Barry Melrose, NHL tonight, coming up after all. Well, the Flyers are starting to get some sustained action to get some shots in on Andy Moog. They want to get in his face, which is something that Philadelphia does well when they're on top of their game. And Vinny Danfoos will want to win this faceoff here to make sure they can't do it right off the draw. Danfoos to take this faceoff against Eric Lindros to the left of Moog. Faceoff won by Philadelphia and cleanly shot right on. Was along the ice, and Moog able to stick it aside. Montreal's getting smoked in the faceoffs inside their own zone, and it's only the first period. Not a good sign. From the Canadiens, center here, Savage now. Inside the Philadelphia zone. Danfus on the full check with Lindros. Comes free for Ruchinski, lets it go. Easy stop for Hextall. And it comes up for the Flyers. Here's Lindros. Didn't cross the red line, but 
Mogul likes to play it, so no icing call. Breezeball back behind his own net. Leaves there for Manson, the lone goal scorer of this game, and he puts out the center. The pace has slowed down a little bit here in Philadelphia. I think they've done that on purpose. Montreal now is with a minute and a half to go in this first. I don't know if they're tired or not, but they haven't had the puck as much, and they're not carrying the puck through the neutral zone like they have through most of this first period. They've had to play most of the time because of it. Montreal shouldn't be tired. Their last played on Sunday, a 3-1 loss to the New Jersey Devils. Hit from the Canadian end. Shot! Off the deflection, and Hextall got just enough inside of the pad, it looked like, off the shot there from Scott Thornton. But you know, sometimes it's harder to get going in that first period when you've had that much time off, Steve, than when you played even the night before. You don't even need a warm-up when you played the night before. Montreal, I think, has pulled back a little bit. They might be burning in the legs just a little bit. They'll come back. Shot right on. Moog makes the stop. Recky was looking for the home run pass. Instead, it's picked off. Shot was blocked at the defense. I think it caught Quintal, who's trying to shake it off now. Final minute of the first. That shot also blocked at the defense. I hit Quintal again. Tough shift for Stefan Quintal. And John leclerc has got the big, heavy shot, too. Those ones hurt. On Mogan rolls in. Philadelphia goes for a change. I was going to say that allows Montreal to come out easily, but not the case. Poulin is sent flying to the ice. Centering pass knocked away by Sebastian Bordelo. Joseph gets to it, sends it back in the net. Forbes is there as they battle for it. It's sticked aside by Moog, and finally Philadelphia unable to handle it. It goes down in the flyer zone. Icing will be called. Well, there's Stefan Quintal, his left leg. Pretty sore right now after blocking a couple of shots from John Leclerc. Montreal has done a good job down low. We talked about one of the keys is they have to be able to play physical down in front of Andy Moe. They have done that in front of him. There were a couple of pucks just thrown out into the crease area by the Flyers who were trying to get their game going down low. But Montreal has done a good job so far. Look at Ron Hextall and something he pointed out and said against good defenses you need to force the issue. Go to the net hard. As a goalie that's the hardest thing for me when I'm screening someone is driving in the net. And I think that's Hexie's way sort of sending a message to his own forwards sure. in a nice way without criticizing them. But hey that's what other teams do to me guys. Let's do it to somebody else. Exactly. Well Philadelphia has been accused of especially teams like Colorado, Detroit, Dallas, New Jersey that they get too fancy. And they don't go to the net well, and they don't use their size. They're starting to in the late stages of this first period. And sure, that's exactly the Hexie's point that he's trying to get to his forwards. Well, it didn't pay off for Philadelphia in the first period because they trail 1-0. Dave Manson's first goal since October as the Canadiens a 1-0 lead. We'll take you to the ESPN News Network right after these messages. We've been looking for Al Morganti, and it appears we've found him, Al, sitting in the stands tonight. Canadians lead the Flyers 1-0 after 20 minutes of play. Back inside the Core State Center, Steve Levy along with Brian Engblom. Canadians came in with just one win in their last 17 games against the Flyers, but the first bird pretty much went their way. Yeah, I thought they established their game plan over the Flyers' game plan, and that was to get speed going. And it's important to do that when you're not a team that can compete physically against the Philadelphia Flyers. Turnovers killed the Flyers. Montreal attacked with speed. This was Wuchinski came in, forced the big save by Hexy. And then this was the goal, the only goal in the period, a weird one. Hexall tried to fend it off, didn't do it properly. And then down low, this is where Montreal had to be critical. Popovich comes in, takes a run at Leclerc and Lindros. They did play physical in front of Andy Moog, a very key part of their game. The stats for the first period, face-off. Philadelphia is absolutely killing the Montreal Canadiens. That's one area that Montreal is really going to have to clean up in the second and third. Hard to believe Montreal was called for two too many men on the ice penalties. The Flyers frustrated, unable to take advantage of it. Both teams are set to hit the ice for the second. Set to go. Start of the second period. Montreal, the one nothing lead. Dampus will take the draw against Dinas Zubris. And we will be underway second period from Philadelphia on ESPN 2 off the face off one by Montreal and it's sent into the Canadian zone Vladimir Malikov out there along with Stefan Quintal they play catch inside their own zone and finally the Canadians come out they flip into the zone Yanni Ninema is back for it Ron Hextall and Andy Moog are goaltenders tonight Flyers in the home whites the Canadians and the rouge black it blue is that how you say it Brian that's close enough I guess <laughs> 
That's the extent of my French. That and Savard. I thought it was Spanish. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you were once a proud member of the Rouge Blanc et Bleu. Just say something. Montreal. Yeah. Check along the boards. Podine went down. Another flyer is spilled. And the Canadiens have come out hitting here in the second. Bordelow tries to get to it. Can't. Joseph forces it in deeper. Mogul play it there. Brunet is hammered by Zubris. Zubris has picked up uh, his physical game and comes out of the corner with the puck. Brunet is still down on the ice. Flyers able to hold the zone, but not anymore. And Richardson back for Philadelphia. Now, Benoit Brunet is really shaken up. He's holding that left arm pretty limply against his side, too. Joseph ripped one off the glass. Work back to the point. Platt throws in deeper. Brindamore couldn't get to it. Montreal able to clear out the center. Right back in, though. Here's Eric Lindros. Soft carom pass off the boards. Nice one for Brindamore. Check by Dampers. Lindros, nifty move. Centering pass. Just in the feet of Ninema. Just inches off the mark. Savage the other way. Off for Rachinsky. Let's it go. Catches the glass. Dampus throws in a little bit deeper. Ninema shoulders Rachinsky to the boards. And the Flyers come away now. Nearly a great opportunity for Philadelphia. What a move by Lindros to avoid the checker there. We talk about his boot strength all the time, but boy, he can really handle the puck and make some terrific moves. We try and get another look at that one. It was a great move down low. I mean, Eric would be great in like a non-checking league. You know, he's got enough well, he, skill and finesse. Oh, he can play any game. There's no doubt. Here's Recky at center. Throws in. Fortunately, though, for all of us, the NHL is a full contact league. Oh, he likes it too. He likes that part of the game. That's what separates him probably from everyone else. A lot of guys have good hands and good wheels. He's got the physical game as well. Recky lets it go. Stopped by Hextall. Good clear in front, so he's able to see it. The Flyers come out the center. Hard hit in front of the Montreal bench. And the Canadians back for it. Dave Manson, lone goal scorer of the game. Goes cross ice. Pass tip, but now Recky recovers and shot it wide. And then Hextall wandering way out. Shovels it off the glass. And that allows Philadelphia to come out. Alexander Daig now carrying it. Trying to show off some of the wheels. Desjardins back for Grant. Let it go. Mog the glove save. And he'll hang on. Last shift, Benoit Brunet really got shaken up. And it appeared to be his left arm as he went to the bench. But he got whacked down so hard onto the ice that it could have been his back. He could have had the wind knocked out of him. You see him on the bench there talking to the trainer. It looks like it might be his elbow. Watch in the corner. Zubris will just throw him down on his back. Lifts his leg, oh, kicks his feet out from underneath him. Yeah, look at Brunet. Instantly, that left arm goes over. I'll bet you got those burners that travel all the way up your arm, and your, your, your arm just feels like it goes completely numb. Now they're taking that elbow pad off and taking a good look at it. Yeah, that's for sure what happened. I wouldn't be surprised if he got cut even right through the elbow pad on that fall. Brunet missed eight games last month, but that was due to a concussion. He comes in with a four-game point-scoring streak, and especially with no Koivu and no Corson, they really need Benoit Brunet in his offense. He is bleeding, you can tell. You can, there's blood right through, so either the elbow pad moved and it cut him when he went down to the ice, or the thing was just worn out and he better get a new one. Eric, little tricky play off the faceoff, tried to shoot it on the fly as the linesman dropped the puck, and it just went wide of the net. Sent inside the Philadelphia zone. Hextall leave it there as Montreal goes for a change. We've played three minutes of this second period. The Canadians hanging on to that one nothing lead. Here's a chance down low. Here's Savage now. He's checked by Richardson back behind the net. Luchinski and Brindamore go to the glass together. And the Flyers come out. Chris Joseph at center. He'll flip in. Flat on with Lindros and Brindamore. Eric has it, centering pass, and it just hopped over the stick of Brindamore. Would have been a tough backhand effort there. Hard hit, Savage is sent down. Needema throws it around the glass. Philadelphia reestablishing their game. There's been a lot more contact in the early stages of this second period. That plays in Philadelphia's favor heavily. Here's Platt trying to center it through. Broken up nicely. Philadelphia set up pretty well down low, although the Canadiens come away. Off of Patrick Poole and finds Recky. Just barely onside. They go to the corner now. Poulin is there. So is Svoboda. And Svoboda wins the battle. Out for Colin Forbes. Forbes back for Svoboda. And he'll throw in. Zubris is the first man to the puck. Dinah Zubris avoids the hit. It's got a lane as a flyer was taken down in front. Delayed penalty coming up. Canadians will go for interference. And the Flyers will look for the great equalizer on the power play when we come back.
Here's a cute little move we talked about from Eric Lindros. Watch it carefully. He'll come into your screen and make a real nifty move. Stop up, control the puck. Whoops, a guy goes right by him, doesn't catch anything, keeps his balance, sees his man in front, but he knows he made the pass into his feet, his only mistake. Here's another cute little move by Eric. Watch this face off. Bang, went for the shot right away. And it doesn't work often, but when it does, I'm sure the other centerman does not feel good about himself. They took a shot there. Popovic, two for interference and 4 14. This is the Flyers' fourth power play of the game already. They Lindros, were 0 for 4 on Long Island last night. Sorry, Steve. Lindros is smart. I mean, Philadelphia has been crushing Montreal inside their own zone. He figured that the uh, Montreal player was going to go back with it on the draw. He'd go with them, get the extra momentum, get a shot on Andy Moe. Didn't turn out the way he wanted, but it was a smart move. Flyers' power play now to try to set it up and. I mean, not only are they 0 for 3 coming into this one, it's been a bad 0 for 3. Have not had uh, many quality chances, if any at all. Canadiens, all sorts of time and space. How does that happen? Bureau able to clear it easily. Well, remember, Paul Coffey is not in this game again tonight, too. And by the way, congratulations to the Coffees who had uh, another child just the other day. Blake, I believe. Yep. They named him. But Paul Coffey is not in the lineup here tonight. And of course, he means so much to their power play. Hard hit. Manson and Lindros. Two big boys went toe to toe and both went down to the ice. And Eric was a little slow to get up there. He was taking numbers, first of all, to see who it was that hit him. He went right over the bench. Looks like he's okay, but it was a slow process of getting off the ice. Here's LeClaire. He'll throw in and he will go for a change as well and get that second flyer power play unit on the ice. And the Canadians again able to clear it easily. Flyers again hear it from their fans. They've looked awful with the man advantage tonight. And they've had opportunities. This is their fourth, and we're not even through this hockey game halfway through. Here's Terry, and he's checked up against the boards. Clap there. He's checked by Malikov. Quintal back behind the net. Can't get to it. Dave does. He set up. Alexander Degg begging for a point with the Flyers to match the one assist he had in his debut. Won't get it here as it's broken up. Terry will throw in a little deeper. There's Clap. Off for Degg. Sidesteps his own player, Grattan, and now has the puck taken away from him, and the Canadians come out. Damfus now to three on two down low. Canadians can top. Turnaround shot stopped by Hextall. And the rebound comes free. And the Canadians play it out at center. Three seconds, two, one. That'll do it. Popovic is out of the box. Here's Recky. Shot. Score! Mark Recky. And again, Hextall got a piece, but not enough to keep it out of the net. And just as that flyer power play expires, Montreal scores to take a 2-0 lead. The quickness of the Canadians on turnovers and the quickness of Mark Recchi's hands are the two keys in this goal. Recchi shoots the quick snapshot even from well out. He's done it two or three times in this game already. Most guys go for the big slap shot from here. He doesn't. Part of that doesn't allow Hextall to set up. Watch him. He gets it. He takes the beat on the defenseman. And Hextall, those are great risks there. Hextall got a piece of it. Didn't cover it quite properly. Got behind him for the second time. 2 nothing Montreal. Mark Recchi, there you see, his 25th of the season. We talked about and showed you the numbers. John LeClaire's success Montreal. against Montreal. Mark Recchi, good for him to have some success against his former club. Greg Reve is back for it for Montreal. He's checked. Let's see how the Flyers respond now. Down 2 nothing again off their worst game of the season last night. They lost 6-1, to one, the most goals they've allowed all season as well. It's Recchi, his 25th, unassisted, even strength at 6-19. Joseph for the Flyers at center. Back to five aside. Joseph lets it go. Moog the stop. Got enough of it, and then Karen to the corner. That shot rocketed wide. Podine had a good chance at a goal there. I believe that was him coming in off that left wing. He smoked that one right to the crease. Oh, it was Forbes, I believe. That was just through the crease. I don't think Andy Moog got a piece of that. Andy had to scuffle back quickly into the net to get into position. If that one was on, very well could have been the Flyers' first goal. Building has gone silent, which for the Flyers actually better than Boone, probably, as it is 2-0 Montreal. Here's Niedema now for Philadelphia in some desperate need of offense. Lindros is back for it. Eric is checked, leaves Air Force Svoboda. Boy, really impressed by Montreal tonight, Brian. Outside of the two, too many men on the ice penalties, which I guess just sort of happened. I think Canadians have been very strong in all three zones. They have. They've, they've played a really smart game. They established their game early. They've, got, they've gotten the Philadelphia back on their heels, and they're keeping them there. 
Here's Savage, nifty move around Needham. It leaves from Malakov, lets it go. Up high on Hextall. We get these sarcastic cheers from the crowd. Brindamore for the Flyers. You know, Hexy's had a heck of a season, as we pointed out, his best season ever. He's bailed Philadelphia out of his share of games, their share of games, rather. It's time for them to come through for him. They need a couple of goals right now to get the pressure off on Hextall. Here's LeClaire. Centering pass. Shot. Hit the post. And that was Daniel LaCroix. I believe that's his first shift of the hockey game. And he hits the post off the neat setup from John LeClaire. Bratton has his helmet removed by Malikov. Back out at center. Savage lets the rocket go up high. Catches glass. Desjardins back to Philadelphia now. Off of LaCroix's skate. Here come the Flyers now. LeClaire offside. And we get the whistle. 11-13 to go. The big boys have gotten together here tonight. Montreal has the edge up to nothing. Coming up after our game, you know, I was down by the flyer bench before. And a fan actually said, hey, you're Barry Melrose. Can you believe somebody think I'd look like Barry Melrose? <laughs> Do you see any resemblance there at all? I, I want to know which one of you is insulted. That's a good point. <laughs> Probably Barry. I've been letting my hair grow, but he's not going to get that one. Here's a chance. Richardson fires in. Mo couldn't get to that one. To play it, throw it in deeper. All of a sudden, Daniel Lacroix seeing all sorts of ice time here. In place of Alexander Dagg. Dagg is usually on that right wing, but he's been replaced by Lacroix, so Cash is making a few changes on the fly here. Here's Leclerc being abused back behind the net. A neat moves by him, sort of toying with Brisebois, who sort of pushes the net over now. Boy, that ought to be a penalty. Yeah, that ought to be I a penalty. I thought Breezeball purposely pushed that net over. There's at least one penalty here. Joseph looks like he's in difficulty down there. Bill McCreary made the made a signal as if there was going to be a penalty. But we'll have to see after the smoke clears here after Joseph being hurt. Watch the net get pushed over here. John LeClaire making a few nifty moves in behind the net. Breezebois just sort of lost his balance, fell into the net. It fell partially on Andy Moog. And then here's Joseph getting hurt. Mm. Oh, yeah, the stick came up on the face. That was Breezebois, 43 red. Right in front of Bill McCreary. Right in front of Al Morganti as well, Al. Well, thanks a lot, Steve. The question of the night here, the question we're asking, who's more valuable to the Flyers? Would it be John LeClaire or Eric Lindros? Well, just a few minutes ago, they had a couple of models with these sweaters, the Olympic sweaters. One would be the 88, belongs to Eric Lindros, who'll be on the Canadian Olympic team. And the reason why I can at least answer that John LeClaire is more popular right now, would be the Team USA jersey, the John LeClaire jersey, almost a sellout here, even at these prices. This is a big deal for LeClaire. Yeah, it's the Olympics. Yes, it's the United States. John LeClaire just signed a deal with Warner Brothers. He's a spokesman for one of the video games. His career really taking off. He's American, and he's got this absolutely great platform of an Olympics to become one of the most popular players in the NHL. Already started there. But all they want now from LeClaire is a goal. Guys? All right, Alan, again, you see our question tonight. This is a tough question. Which player is more valuable to the Flyers? Vote at the NHL page at ESPN.com. We will tally them up, and then we'll get to the results later in the third period. Yeah, big point by Al there about that deal that LeClaire just signed with Warner Brothers. The other endorse of Patrick Ewan and Andrews, Galarraga, and Shaq. I want to know what happened to the models that Al said were wearing the jersey before. What did he do with them? <laughs> Breezebois, four for high stick, and the double minor at 924. As let's see what the Flyer power play does here. They are 0 for 4 with just one shot on their four power plays combined. Now, granted, not all of them have been full two minute power plays, but still, you get four power plays in the game, you'd like to have more than one shot. And in those four power plays, the Canadians have actually had more shots on goal. They've had three short handed shots. And you can see the absolute lack of confidence right now because of the fans booing them on this power play for Philadelphia. Their passing is not very good, to say the least, coming up to, uh, through the neutral zone. Here's Brindamore just onside for Lindros. Canadians get to it. Malakov tried to play it. Just caromed away from him. And it goes deeper inside the zone. Erica swinging around for Svoboda. Drops it down. There's Lindros. See him Brindamore bunched up. They now separate. And they'll go to the corner. Malakov there. Leclerc on him. Brindamore comes away. Ninamo is cutting in from his point position. But now he regroups. That's Yanni Ninamo with the puck. Tried to let it go as Lott 
And the Canadiens able to clear. That's the other part of the Philly power play problem here tonight. The shots from the point are not getting through. The Montreal defenders, both the forwards and defense, are sort of taking a page out of the New York Rangers book. They don't always try to fight the flyer player down in front of their own net, but they get between them and the puck coming from the point. They're cutting those pucks off, and Philly's getting absolutely nothing from it. Desjardins up ahead for Trent Clack. Clack for Zubris down low. Try to get the return pass and finally does. This is Zubris with the puck. Dinah Zubris off for Desjardins. Cross for Terry and shot. Deflected, went wide of the net. 17 seconds left in the first of the double minor penalty to Breezebaugh for the high stick. Off Zubris' stick. Philadelphia just barely able to keep it in. But the Flyers need some fresh troops out there. They go for a change, and that allows Montreal to clear and maybe even a chance. Here's Recky in a race for the puck. Recky has it. He's on side. Try to set up Brunet, but it was taken away from him by Brindamore. When you're not passing very well in the power play, that's the time where you need one of your skilled guys with speed to grab it and go. That was always Paul Coffey's specialty. He's not in the lineup tonight. Dangerous giveaway by Leclerc, but Brunet, who was back from his injury before we saw him down on the ice, unable to get the opportunity. Here come the Flyers again. Lindros, after a brief spell on the bench, he's back on the ice. Centering pass deflected out of play. Looked like it off a Canadian stick. Well, the Flyers have been dominant for sure this season, but they've dominated the teams they should dominate, which you want to do, but against teams 500 or better like the Canadiens, a 353 winning percentage, and that's not going to do it come playoff time, Brian. Yeah, that has them alarmed. I mean, you're supposed to beat the teams that are below you, and they've done an excellent job of that, as you can see. But against the teams that are in the upper echelon, they have struggled. 0-4-1 versus the elite teams, Dallas, Detroit, New Jersey, and Colorado. And those are the teams that the Philadelphia Flyers are always measured against. Bob Clark, their general manager, is well aware of that. And they need to do better in those areas. And it seems that when they play those top teams again, they move the puck around too much. They don't get basic. They don't go to the net. They don't just shoot. Let John LeClaire be John LeClaire. Get the puck to the crease area. Let him bowl people over. Let uh, Eric Lindros do the same thing. They don't miss very often. But when you start passing too many times, you get yourself into trouble. Something else alarming about the Flyers and that record against teams that have better records than they do. In those five games, Brian 0 4 1, they scored a total of five goals. Yeah. That's kind of what Ron Hextall is referring to earlier. We showed you his thoughts about crashing the other team's net against good defensive clubs. Five goals in those five games against teams with better records than the Flyers. And remember the finals last year? They got to the finals and they were completely shut down by the Detroit Red Wings in that sweep. Here's Lindros. Power play continues. This is the second of the two penalties now. Officially 0 for 5 now on the night. Canadians have it centered. Sometimes, excuse me, Steve, sometimes what happens is when you're playing against teams that are tight defensively, like those top four teams we just mentioned are, uh, the Flyers seem to think, apparently, that you have to be extra special. You have to make extra special plays in order to beat that good defense. Well, more often than not, that play is just right into their hands. You have to make it extremely simple and just crash the net, shoot the puck there. Shooting the puck would be good in this four-minute power play, which still has 30 seconds left on it. The Flyers have no shots on goal. We've barely had any puck control. Montreal's done a terrific job here of keeping Philadelphia back on their heels. They make one good pass if they're lucky. There's a Montreal player right in their face, and there's no good second pass. They dump it in. Montreal gets to it again, and it's another turnover. Canadians get to it. Unable to clear. Philadelphia holds the zone. Svoboda lets it go. Shot. Just got a piece by Moe, deflected out of midair by Brindamore. They whack away at it, and Moe has it, and he gets the whistle. Speaking of whacking well, Mark Recchi was almost victimized for a goal against on that last shift. They got control of the clock. Andy Moog scooped around the boards to him. He has one goal and one assist tonight. Not bad in a two-goal hockey game. But the puck came around the Recchi. He was on his backhand, and yes, it is a difficult play. He tried to one-time it out of the zone on the backhand, turned it over. Philadelphia got one of their few decent scoring chances of late. You've got to be careful inside your own zone. Face off to the left of Andy Mogus. Discussing some very important strategy. This is game 698 for Andy Moog. 699, rather, 
for Andy Moe. Count up on 700 games played for a goaltender in the National Hockey League. That's a lot of rubber to see. It is, and he's done it at a very high level. He's done a great job here in Montreal. Everything that they had hoped, his own personal numbers are so good, and the amount that he's helped uh, Jocelyn Tebow is almost immeasurable. Whistle as they freeze the puck in front of the Montreal zone. Canadians have taken the Flyers off their game, and they lead this game 2 0. Back in the house that Eric Lindros kind of built here in Philadelphia, the Canadians have a 2 0 lead over the Flyers. Mark Recchi's team out in front. Look at the shots on goal. It's only separated by one, but that is a tremendous surprise considering the Flyers have had six power plays and the Canadians have had just one power play, and yet Montreal has a one-shot advantage. Yeah, Montreal has uh, tried to shoot themselves in the foot by taking that many penalties. They just can't afford to keep doing that because you can't keep guys like Leclerc, Lindros, and Brindamore off the sheet uh, indefinitely. But they have played a very effective game, and Andy Moore has certainly done his share. Six power plays to one. I'm not sure the last time I've seen that at any point in any hockey game recently. Six to one. Usually if one team has one or two more than the other team. Usually not a difference of five. It's six minutes to go here in the second. Steve Levy, Brian Engblom, Al Morganti from the Core State Center in Philadelphia. Thursday night, ESPN 2 Hockey Fire on Ice. Glad you could be with us. They battle for it in the corner, two on two. It's finally worked out to center. And the Flyers are back for it with Chris Joseph. He sends back in, and it's a two-line pass. And we get the whistle of 5.40 to go in the second. Well, the Montreal Canadiens have been kind of a funny mix throughout this season. Their road record, 6.40. That is magnificent. They are second only, I believe, to the Dallas Stars, who are at 7.22. And against the conference, Eastern Conference, they have really struggled. They obviously have to really clean that up because 24 out of their next 31 games are against their own Eastern Conference. And he, here, you can see the record. Look at against the West, 14-2-3. and three. That is the best of anybody in the league. They absolutely pounded the Western Conference this year. And, Brian, those two losses, both to Detroit. Yeah. The Stanley Cup champs, so that's pretty darn good. Quintal and Lacroix go to the corner. Ratting on it there. Picks it up for Philadelphia. Under five and a half. Centering pass. Leclerc just shot it wide. And again, Daniel Lacroix up on a big scoring line for Philadelphia with Bratton as he tried to knock it out of midair. Canadians get to it. As clearly Wayne Cashman looking for some spark out of Daniel Lacroix. Sent inside the Canadian zone. Quintal on the touch. Icing called. And they'll bring it back down into the Philadelphia zone. Well, the Flyers are down two to nothing, and their most recent player acquired Alexander Digg, who has great speed on the outside, who has been playing on the second line for the most part since he came here, has not played in the last eight plus minutes. So obviously, Wayne Cashman doesn't like what he sees so far. Al, you noticed that too, didn't you? Yeah, I noticed it, Brian, and I think Wayne Cashman wants the uh, team going in the net, crashing. When Wayne Cashman came here, he promised a more aggressive team. Last night, after Luke beating the Islanders two nights previously, Sigmund Palfi just ran all over the ice on the Flyers, and I don't think a lot of fans nor Cashman were happy with it. Alexander Dagg, a, a softer player certainly than Lacroix, but you would think his, his hands and his speed would, uh, when you're behind, he should be valuable. He's not out there now. I mean, they could really have some problems fitting him into the lineup. Well, there's a message being sent there, Al. There's no doubt. Cashman's trying to get a point across to him, and uh, Dagg has to get with the program quickly, obviously. Cashman wants uh, wants to use him in these types of situations but he has to pull the way he wants him to play. Here's Trent Clatt now side of the net centers for Lindros two players to him couldn't get the shot off and it's covered up either by Moog or Dave Manson. It's Moog. We get the whistle. Two nothing halves. Perfect. Alexander Dang on the bench where he spent most of this second period. First period, he got six minutes of ice time. In the second period, just shy of it. Two minutes. We only got four and a half to go here in the second. And again, Montreal leading this game two to nothing. But there may be more than just unhappiness uh, against Alexander Dagg by Wayne Cashman, his coach. I mean, Cashman's worried about the whole team, certainly, in trying to get them going in the right direction. Uh, they didn't play well last night, and they're not doing so well again here tonight. So it's not just Alexander Dagg in the picture. Two on two, back of the net to the right of Andy Moog. Lindros in the battle. Puck squirts free, but the Canadians come out. Three on two if they hurry at center, and they'll throw in. Hextall way out to play it away from the Canadians, but Montreal able to get to it first. 
Although Philadelphia gets possession, they send down. That was a real good dump in by Montreal. They forced Hextall to come out and handle a puck. Whoa, which he does well. <laughs> Giveaway in front. Brindamore nearly put it home. They make one good play at one end and then a kind of a dumb play coming out from behind their own foot. Net in their own end. There's Ruchinski now moving towards the middle of the zone. Loses possession. He and Needham will go to the glass. Forbes in the battle with Savage. Manson steps up against Zubris. And Needham comes away with the puck. Under four to go here in the second. Here's Zubris. Headman pass couldn't put to Forbes. Montreal back the other way. Well, Bureau can't get a hold of the puck. Thornton does. And throws it in deeper into the Philadelphia zone. Now the Flyers able to come out at center. Off for Colin Forbes. Now a regular full-time Philadelphia Flyer after being down with the Philadelphia Phantoms in the AHL earlier in the season. Flyers pinching just a bit. Richardson able to keep the zone as he and Bureau battle. Zubris is hit by Reve. Hit by him twice, three times, four times. Holding in to help out. And it finally squirts out for the Canadiens. Here's Thornton, throws in. Back behind the net, Joseph out ahead for the quad. Hops over the stick, over the glass, and into the crowd. Gives us an opportunity to check in on our Molson League leaders. And there's a look at Mark Recchi, and you know he's on the list. He is your NHL Ironman. Look at that, 514 consecutive games. Of course, still well shy of Doug Jarvis, the all-time walk. But for the top five in our hockey game here tonight, John LeClaire joins the party. After an injury to Brian Leach, removed the Ranger star defenseman from the list. But the last time Mark Recchi missed a game, March 31st of 91. Ironic that Recchi and LeClaire, the guys who were traded for each other, both uh, appear on that Iron Man list as well. Yep. Similarities between their games only in that they're both scorers. Recchi, not nearly the size of John LeClaire, is not able to compete in the same way that LeClaire does. But he's very effective in his own way. I think that Recchi has really become a good two-way player since his days in Montreal. Early on, they said to him that, uh, you know, he was sometimes uh, a little bit guilty of looking for goals and for points. But I think he's, he's gotten past that. And uh, I know the Montreal Canadiens have really raved about Recchi over the past two seasons. And especially with the injuries to their other offensive leaders, they really need Recchi to play well in really all three zones. And he has, and he has the second goal for the Canadians tonight. Dave Manson in the first, Mark Recchi here in the second, 2 0 Montreal. Here's Valerie Bure, who was held up a bit, trying to fight through two flyers, and Terrian punishes him. Bure, though, continues to battle. Desjardins back behind the net. Off for Daniel Lacroix, who's getting tons of ice time now here in this second period. In place of Alexander Dang on this second line. For the Flyers. Breeze Bois back forward for the Canadians. He's hit by Leclerc as he just got rid of the puck in time. Montreal doing a nice job, even when the pace slows down. Early in the game, they established the pace when it was high tempo, and they benefited from it. Now that the tempo was slowed down and, and sort of on again, off again in the second, Montreal is still controlling the puck. Here's Eric with some speed. Lindros lets it go. Blocker saved by Moe. Very few second chances for Philadelphia offensively. They'll get a rush, they get some speed, they get one shot, and that's it. This one never even gets through. It's broken up. Needema has for Philadelphia at center. Alexander Daig has made an appearance on the ice here. His first shift in some time here in the second period. Let's see what he does with the opportunity. It's fired into the Montreal zone. The Canadians get to it and flip it out to center. 50 seconds left in this second period now. Here's Dag with the puck. Good pass, just topped over Zubris' stick. That has happened a bunch of times to the Flyers tonight. Not sure if it's an ice problem or things just aren't breaking the way for the Philadelphia Flyers. Doesn't seem to be happening to Montreal. Here's Zubris again, can't handle that pass. Zubris to the corner now. Brunet for Montreal, checked by Forbes. Reve squirts it free. Shot from the corner as the puck carried out was blocked at the defense. But Montreal can't clear. Here's Zubers trying to put on the fancy move. Couldn't escape from a check and get the shot off. Finally, Montreal able to clear. Some rare sustained pressure by Philadelphia in the closing seconds of this second period. As players get together now in front of that Philadelphia bench. And that is it. 
second period is complete 2 0 Canadians. The new Dodge intermission report is next. We'll take you to the ESPN News Network. Did you hear Brett Hull's comments today about being concerned about the NHL? You'll want to. Stay tuned for that. And Florida hosting the Dallas Stars. All that and much more coming up during tonight's new Dodge intermission report. We'll take you to the ESPN News Network right after. 40 minutes complete in Philadelphia. The Canadians have a 2-0 lead over the Flyers. A big part of that. Canadians penalty killing or Flyer power player lack of. They're 0 for 6 in the game, Brian, which is two shots on goal in those six power players. And watch Montreal here. They're taking a page out of the New York Rangers, but look at that. They're, the Flyer players are behind them, but the puck is not getting through. That happened to Philadelphia throughout the first two periods. Montreal continues to turn pucks over on the power plays for Philadelphia and getting it out just like that. Philadelphia really struggling, and then Mark Recchi scores the second goal. Terrific quick shot that just fooled Ron Hextall. He got a little bit of a piece of it. Not enough. Alexander Dagg and the Flyers have struggled, and they trail 2-0 as we head into the third period. Getting set for the third period. Canadians, a 2-0 lead over the Flyers. Trading places. Well, sort of. Eric Desjardins was thrown in, but for our purposes for right now, the head-to-head -head matchup, Mark Recchi to John LeClaire. 13 minutes for Big John. That's pretty normal for him. Mark Recchi, not as big a, a, a big a man physically. He's not able to play as much uh, often. But also, the fact that they're ahead by two goals means that John LeClaire has got to try and get out there as much as possible. Total numbers since they were traded. And there you see the game's mighty close. And I'll tell you what, I think people would be surprised that Mark Recchi has nearly as many points as LeClaire. Talking about, uh, what, some 47 points difference. Yeah, well, especially if you talk to Montreal people and they, they just hammer on the fact that LeClaire has become such a big star since he came to the Philadelphia Flyers. 50 points difference is not a whole heck of a lot. Um, they said that throughout this game, Mark Recchi has done a very admirable job with the Montreal Canadiens as well, but certainly LeClaire has a decided edge. Offside at the Montreal Blue Line. Maybe the big difference is in goals. While it's only a difference of some 47 points, it's a difference of about 60 goals. And Recchi has the advantage. Or rather, Leclerc has the advantage. Yeah, and, and the fact that Philadelphia has been on the upswing the last couple of years, too, and Montreal has gone through some struggles, and it's just now regaining itself, I think, also has a lot to do with it, too. Mark Recchi has had to deal with uh, different sorts of things, coaching changes, and uh, teams uh, not making the playoffs. Uh, that's the other thing that Leclerc has not had to deal with. Getting a scoring change. They're adding an assist now. Getting two assists to the recce goal. We'll get those for you just as soon as we can. Face off just outside the Montreal blue line. Poulin and Manson get assists now on Recky's ball. That's wild. Going from unassisted to giving two assists. A reach Recky from Poulin and Manson at 619 of that second period. 2 0 Canadiens. Al Morgani is standing by. We'll check in with him. In fact, we'll do it right now on the icing call. Big Al. Thanks a lot, Steve. Well, it is not the playoffs, but the Flyers, you can bet, are feeling heat right now. A bad game in Long Island. They have not been able to establish themselves what kind of team they are. Wayne Cashman came in. They were supposed to be a more physical team. They win games. They're a very talented team, but they don't dictate the tempo of a team. They'll beat another team at their own game. You've already pointed out tough time against good teams, teams with 500 records or better. Eric Lindros, this is the kind of a game where he's supposed to come through. The fans want to see a guy like John LeClaire. They call him Bam Bam for his number of shots and goals. They want him to do something now. Chris Gratt, another guy under the gun. And you know, it's kind of a microcosm of last year. Everybody complaining about Hextall. But even if he had thrown a shutout, where would they be right now? No goals. So not the playoffs, but there's a lot of heat. He's feeling it, but it's going to be spread around that locker room if they don't win this. All right, Al. Interesting. The Flyers obviously desperate for a goal. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, this might be the first time at even strength we see LeClaire and Lindros on together. Yeah, I, I believe that's true. They have that power play time together, but five on five, I think this is the first time. Brian Savage moves it out ahead. It's thrown into the Philadelphia zone. Hextall out to play it. Danfus rolls off him and it comes right to LeClaire. Off for Lindros, gives it back to LeClaire now. And here's Eric with an angle shot. And it's a stop by Andy Moe. And Big John has no shots in the first two periods. That's unusual for him. LeClaire is usually good for four or five shots. Uh, every game that he plays, he hasn't been able to find the mark here yet tonight, and he gives credit to the Montreal Canadiens for that. LeClaire with back-to-back 50-goal -back seasons. Right there, lets it go, and it's deflected. 
off of Moog's stick. If he gets it again this season, he's got 34. He's the second leading goal scorer in the NHL. He'll be the first American born player ever to record three consecutive 50 goal seasons. Something to shoot for as he gets set for the Olympics. Here's Desjardins for Philadelphia now. McClaire trails only Tamu Solani in goal scoring in the NHL, and he trails him by three. Heading into tonight's action, Malakov is back for it. Off for Quintal. Throws it up along the wall there. Fulton able to get to it. But the Flyers pick it clean. Here's Brindamore. Had a quick second to get it off, and he shot it wide. Thornton trying to clear. Kept it nicely by Desjardins. Rocket up high on Quintal, who's taking a beating tonight, blocking shots. But again, even, even strength this time, the Montreal defense really playing up and playing part goaltender. They blocked an awful lot of shots or attempted passes from the Philadelphia points down towards the front of Andy Moog. Cut everything off and giving Moog a lot of support. There's Popovic now. Giveaway at the center ice. And Philadelphia will shoot it in. Popovic will go back for it. We're coming up on 17 and a half to go here in the third. 2-0 Canadians. Svoboda back for it. Loses. Nearly a chance. That one rolls through. Ekstall has it between his legs. Didn't know it. And now he squeezes the pads together. And he gets the whistle. Hextall has struggled a bit. The two goals would not be considered good goals and because the Flyers are being shut out. You can only say that Lindros and Leclerc have struggled here tonight as well. Our Sports Zone poll question, in case you're joining us late, you still have time to jump on and vote. Which player is more valuable to the Flyers, Leclerc or Lindros? You can vote at the NHL page at ESPN.com. Well, John Leclerc has established himself so well, you know, since he's become a Philadelphia Flyer. Eric Lindros came into the league with a huge reputation, and it just seems funny to me that when they split them up or when when uh, Lindros has been hurt at time, it's always John Leclerc. They say, well, how is he going to do? How is he going to do? He does just fine, just fine on his own, and he does every bit as well, I think, as uh, Eric Lindros does. Fired out. And the question as to who got to it first, they do call it icing, and they'll bring it back down into the Philadelphia zone. Well, one of the newest Montreal Canadiens, Patrick Poulin, 24-year-old, who's already on his fourth team. And Poulin has said that he knows he has to step it up. He's getting to the point in his career. He's a Montreal native. Now that he's in Montreal, he knows he has to come through. He was supposed to be a first-line player by his own admission when he was drafted by the Hartford Whalers. It didn't work out. Tonight, he's been playing on first line a lot because of injuries mostly. You don't have Corson, you don't have Saku Koivu. He's played a little bit of center for Montreal, but he's back on wing. The chances are that he's probably going to be a third or a fourth line uh, guy for these guys. But he's excited to be in Montreal, and certainly after what was going on in Tampa, yeah. I think it's certainly a relief to have a chance to win hockey games on a regular basis instead of all the losing they were doing. Leclerc well, lets it go. Alaska wouldn't be a bad place even. <laughs> the way Tampa Bay's season has gone. Pool ends play. This is his fourth game with the Canadiens. He's got at least a point in all four games as he picked up that lead assist. They added on the assist to Mark Recchi's goal. Flyers get to it. They'll fire it right in on Andy Moog, who has been cool and calm tonight in the Canadiens' end. Well, his defenders in front of him have done a terrific job of letting him see the puck, and that's all any goaltender asks. Give me a clean shot at it, and I'll do the best I can. Andy Moog has been able to see a lot of pucks out tonight, and so far he's done a perfect job. Philadelphia with 16.34 to go in the third. This one is far for him over. However, the Flyers, one of the big stories tonight, 0 for 6 on the power play. And you see, when they don't score a power play goal, 8, 12, and 3. When they do, they've only lost once. So a power play goal seems to mean the world for the Philadelphia Flyers. And even more distressing for Wayne Cashman. There are the numbers again. They've had six power play chances, just two shots on goal. And a penalty to Montreal, so this would be power play number seven. Well, perfect time for them to kick it in. I think it's Bordelow who's in the penalty. Oh, Lindros is in as well, yeah, so it'll be a four-on-four four situation. So it won't be time for them to 
add to those numbers or try to turn this game around for the Flyers. Again, Montreal playing a terrific road game. Alan Vigneault has really set this team on its ear right from the start. Wayne Cashman trying to get his troop rallied and going in the right direction after a tough game last night. But Vigneault, Dave King, the coaching staff of Montreal deserve a terrific amount of credit. And the manager, Rajon Ould, their manager, they started this season with the, essentially the same team they finished with last year, except for Andy Moog, who they acquired in the offseason. They have just Matt now recently made the only big trade of the year but they have made a lot of headway with the team that they have last, way, last year rather, uh, just by setting in a good system and getting the guys to stick to it. I'll tell you what, they just made a good trade on penalties. Bordalo for Lindros, we'll take that any time. We'll pick up slashing runners, two minutes apiece. So we go four on four inside the Philadelphia zone. Flyers would certainly like to have Lindros on the ice for this four on four. Put that money on the rest of the game. Savage lets it go to the rocket. Hextall flashed out the left pad, and the Flyers come back the other way. With Trent Klatt. Klatt one-on-one, -on -one, shot it off the defenseman, Popovic. Side of the net, Klatt with all sorts of time. Big stop by Moog. Maybe his best of the night as he was laying prone on the ice. And Klatt could not lift it up over him. And the Flyers come back again. Here's Desjardins now. Manson stood up to him. Of course, Desjardins a throw in. He'll go for a change. Rolls off the stick of Luchinski. And it's sent deeper inside the zone. Dave Manson. His first goal since October was the first goal of this game. In the first period, gave Montreal a 1-0 lead. Leclerc has. Breeze ball whacking away at him. Centering pass. Only Damfus is there. And he plays for Montreal. Gives off there. Breeze ball lost it. Leclerc, turnaround shot, saved by Moe from in tight. Good work by Johnny Leclerc there. He picked the pocket of the Montreal player, turned around with that quick shot on net. Andy Moe was there. It was an angle shot, but still, good solid work by Leclerc. Svoboda goes back for it. Two on two to the right of Ron Hextall. That you mentioned, Brian John Leclerc, not firing on goal. That shot was a good one. And that was his first shot of the night on goal. Ninema in pinching deep, showing some of the necessity for some Philadelphia offense as the defensemen are really joining the play. Coming up on 14 and a half to go here in the third. Canadians look to break with speed. Here's Valerie Bure with the move. Bure from the angle, let it go. Hextall kicked that one aside as well. Canadians get to it. Benoit Prune trying to use a screen now and trying to set up some offense. Gives off to Bure. Throws it down a little deeper, but the Flyers able to get to it. And it's Leclerc carrying it. Off for Zubris. Trying to find Lindros, who's out of the box. We're back to five aside. Lindros and Kintal there. Zubris is hit by Malikov. Rolls up along the wall. Richardson able to keep the zone as he and Bordalo battle. Centering pass. Brunet is there for the Canadians. He'll slap it around the glass and all the way down. And far enough for Ison as the Canadians go for the change. Luke Richardson touches up to bring it down on Fox. Andy Bogue with another stellar performance in goal for the Montreal Canadiens. He did a really good job against Trent Platt in Platt's last shift. He'll come out of the corner with it, Klatt will. Andy Moog will read the play and just lie down. Klatt doesn't have enough room. The quick spin around move, Andy Moog knows it's almost impossible to get that one up quick. He played the percentages, laid down, made yet another save. Moog over his last nine games has a save percentage of 926. And he's doing it here tonight, shutting out the Flyers on home ice. And it's blocked and broken up. They race forward at center. Flyers, though, able to get to the loose puck. And you know, one of the things about Andy that they needed so desperately was his calm demeanor. Daniel Lacroix gets the shot off, and the stop there by Moog as well. And now sticks get up. Some emotion out of Philadelphia. We thought we'd see this right from the start, but we really haven't. That was Lacroix who got a good shot on Andy Moog. Moog made it look pretty easy going down his knees to make the save. And Chris Gratton came in with a shot to Rive, the Montreal defenseman who was defending on the play. Rivet had taken a shot from Lacroix, first of all. A quick opening play, good pass there to Lacroix. He'll stop up, there's 52 red. Gets beaten clearly on the play, but recovers well. The shot is already on net. Rivet, 52, gives an extra shot to Lacroix, who's, who gives him a shot, and here comes Chris Gratton. 
Everybody gets into the mix. I'm, it was a quick opening play on that turnaround there by the Philadelphia Flyers, one of the very few they've had in this game, whereas Montreal had several, especially in the first two periods. I'm sure this hasn't been said too often, but I think Daniel Lacroix for the best flyer forward. At least had the, the best opportunities to score for Philadelphia here tonight. It's yeah, I, I tons of ice time. I would agree with that. He and Dinah Zubris, I think, are two of the best that have been in there and sticking their nose in and accomplished something. Uh, uh, they're not checked as closely, of course, as uh, uh, Leclerc and Lindros, who always have all five guys in the Montreal Canadiens looking for them wherever they are. Dinah Zubris has done a heck of a job, and he's been under pressure. He's played well his last four or five games, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that Bobby Clark threatened in the paper to demote him down to the American League. That really got Dinah's attention. And uh, he's been playing a lot of third-line center, and especially since uh, the trade was made, Prospel's gone, so he kind of filled in on that spot. He moved from wing to center ice, and Dinah Zubris has done a real nice job. This kid is still 19 years old. He won't be 20 until June. He's got still tremendous upside. He just needed a little kick in the backside, and Bobby Clark gave it to him. He's certainly not going to hurt you on the ice. He's a plus 23. That's fourth best in the entire NHL. But while he doesn't hurt the team, We'd like him to help the team as well with a little more offense. And you know, we've seen that tonight. Yeah, and, and you, the NHL is about adjustments, both as a team and as an individual. And Dinah Zubas is showing that he can make adjustments when he's told uh, what he has to do in any given situation. You know what? This kid moved away from home when he was 12 years old to play hockey. He knows how to make adjustments. Zubris and Ninema have come under some pressure in Philadelphia. Both had very strong rookie seasons. Sophomore jinx, maybe, maybe not. You remember your second year, Brian? Any sophomore jinx for you? Uh, my first year wasn't enough to recall it as a second <laughs> year jinx, probably. <laughs> Here's Leclerc, let it go. Shot stopped by Moog, went off the side of the net. The crowd thought it was in. They reacted. And at this point, they're set to react to just about anything. Not a lot to cheer about for Philadelphia tonight as we come up on 12 minutes left here in the third period. And the saves that Andy Moog has made, again, like that one, tough saves that he makes look so easy. And it's that calm air about him that has added so much to this Montreal team in general. And certainly to Jocelyn Thibault, the young uh, goaltender that's working in tandem with him. Quintal fires it right back out. Montreal's played a very solid game here tonight. Penalty killing's been outstanding. And outside of too, too many men on the ice penalties they took in a 10-minute span. Uh, they've been near flawless here tonight, showing up on the screen. Canadians again came in unbeaten in their last eight on the road. That's their best stretch in 16 years. They've struggled on home ice for some reason. They're still trying to figure that out. Most of them. Much better on the road than they are here. Here the Flyers come out of the corner now. Shot is blocked, never made it on goal. Thornton will get to it for Montreal. In on the angle, he stood up, will throw in. Fulton gets to it there. On with Patrick Poulin. Two players all over Thornton now. Now they step away. Canadians unable to get the chance, and the Flyers will look to bring. Colin Forbes on the full chance. One thing you have to be impressed with here, too, in Montreal, uh, Steve, is that they played an up-tempo game with speed, which they like to do in the first period and the early part of the second. But they've also shown in stages of the second and here in this third period, they can sit back and play defense. I'm a big advocate. You have to be able to play more than one type of game if you're going to go anywhere in the playoffs. Montreal is showing they can. At center, Bore, and we can't emphasize enough, again, without their second and third leading scorer, one of their real physical players, Shane Corson, Saku Koivu, also not in the lineup. And that, that just doubles the uh, how impressive this effort has been here tonight, I think. That's true. And, and again, especially on the road, but perhaps in this instance, they're, they're more comfortable. They can just settle into their game, nothing flashy, and perhaps they uh, they can just do their jobs better without forcing a boy in the lineup here in Philly than in Montreal. Nearly a tip-in by Brendan Moore. You're right. Moog is so cool and calm on every single play around the net. Some of that veteran experience, that savvy. Well, I'm not so sure he wasn't like that when he was much younger as well. Yeah, I think he just geared that way. And he's just always sort of uh, low-key that way. Flyers get to it. Past the midway point of this third period. Steve Levy, Brian Englom, Al Morganti from the Core State Center in Philadelphia. Here's Brian Savage. Little drop pass. Shot. Score! Off the feed from Vincent Dampus. It's Brian Savage on the goal. And the Canadiens open up a 3-0 lead. Wow. 
Brian Savage is the epitome of streaky scorers, and he has been on a hot streak. But again, it's a turnover in the neutral zone and the quickness of the Canadians to jump onto the attack. Look at him scamper after that puck. Nice play by Savage to leave it and then get it back and finish it off terrifically. Brian Savage has great skills. When he goes down and doesn't score goals, you don't see him for a long time. But he's back up and scoring goals, and that shows you his coordination, his ability to make plays, and his ability to finish them. Usually this is a guy that starts off the season just tearing things up, and then he fades in the second half. But this year for Savage, he had a broken bone in his hand, and he didn't uh, play the first seven games, so he's getting hot here in the second half. A couple of weeks ago here in Philadelphia, Brian Savage scored the game tying goal. Flyers and Canadians a 3-3 tie. He might have just put the finishing touches on this hockey game. Crushing the Flyers with a third goal. 3-0 Montreal. And here's Savage with the puck now. We come up on nine minutes left in the third period. It's Savage, his 17th from Danfoos, even strength at 10-28. And that one, while well, he could fault Hextall probably on the first two, that one certainly wasn't his fault. No, there's nothing he could do in that. That was terrific play, most of it, Brian Savage. Shot. Ripped high by Joseph now. You see the flyer defense really in deep. Trying to get something going offensively. Shot on mode. Cooley and calmly steers to the corner. Craig Rouve back behind the Montreal net. Gets it up for Thornton. And here's Recky. Trying to make the move. Cuts inside. Recky backhand shot is stopped by Hextall. Center comes back to the point for Rouve. Rouve drops back to the point. Shot is blocked and it will come back to center. Brian Savage on a tear. His last 16 games, 11 goals, 8 assists, 19 points. You mentioned street and score, Brian. Yeah, not, not bad it. numbers for anybody in the league. Doesn't matter what your name is. There is nobody streakier than Brian Savage. Trust me, it's a, it's amazing the numbers he can put up in short spaces of time. He's never been able to sustain it for a long time. Breeze Bois back behind the net. This building has gotten eerie kind of quiet. It's the, the show me time right now. Show me something good or something, show me something bad and you'll hear from me, but that seems to be the way the crowd is right here in Philadelphia. Now. Normally this wouldn't be as tough to swallow probably for Flyer fans, except they come off that awful loss last night. Yeah. I don't know, 6-1 on the island and the lose at home like they are now. That might qualify as a fifth-ledged slump for a team that's supposed to be a contender like the Flyers. There's a lot of teams that'll settle for two goal slumps if they can stem it at that goal. But it's the way. I mean, you lose by, you know, two games oh, yeah. in a row by a goal. True. As opposed to what happened last night and what's happening here. That shot. Did it go? Red light went on for a second. Desjardins raised his stick and in celebration. And maybe they'll review it, maybe not. Red light did go on for a second. We'll wait for a whistle and see what the call is. Here's Brindamore now for Philadelphia. Brindamore coming up. That shot by Eric Desjardins. Did it go? Or but it hit the post. I find it hard to believe that it could have gone in. The angle at which it went in and came right back out at, I would think no, but it'll be interesting to see the replay. Ninema circles away from a check inside his own zone. Off for Leclerc. Neither Leclerc nor Lindros able to play it. And here's a chance. Here's Leclerc breaking. He lets it go. The rocket shot. Stop. There's a score. On the rebound. I think it went in off one of the Canadians. And this could be a very interesting situation. They could review the first one, and then the Leclerc goal might not count. But either way, it would appear that the Flyers are on the board, and it's 3-1. to one. John Leclerc takes a, a turnover and just blasts one at Andy Moog and then keeps going. I think he got some help on the play, too, from one of the Montreal players that may have gone off him. But Leclerc, with the typical ability to capitalize on the situation, there's a turnover as a couple of Montreal players get crossed up. There's Leclerc, walks in, he whacks it. Mo comes out, calmly makes the save, and then deftly that went off of Stefan Quintal. It was bouncing Quintal. It went off his leg. He tried to stop it, couldn't get a handle on it. So they will not review that questionable call on the goal, whether it hit the post or went in. We've been told, we've been able to look at a replay, that it was not a goal. And Bill McCreary did not even look at it, send it upstairs for the review, so it is... Leclerc's goal. Flyers are on the board. It's a 3-1 hockey game. And six minutes left to see if Philadelphia's got some juice. Here's Lindros playing it off his skate. Throws it off the side of the net. And we get a whistle. Leclerc upset. And a fast whistle. 
The Flyers are finally on the board. They thought they were perhaps on the board. A shot by Eric Desjardins. You can see clearly off the post that one did not count. But in the same sequence, no whistles in between. John Leclerc on a turnover. Blast one at Andy Moe. Moe gets help from his defenseman, Stefan Quintel. Unfortunately for Quintel, it goes off his leg. He can't scoop it out of the way before it goes into the net. So John Leclerc gets credit. His 35th. As he creeps to within two of Tamu Salati for the NHL lead. 13-22, unassisted goal for John Leclerc. Gives us a 3-1 hockey game. 5.45 to go here in the third. And that's only Leclerc's fourth point now in his last nine games. Those are not uh, incredible numbers for Leclerc. We're so used to him scoring almost every game. There's Thornton. Shot is blocked by Desjardins. And he comes out at center. Here come the Flyers now with Trent Klatt. Drop for Brindamore. Using the screen of Manson. Center! Grattan shot! What a save by Moog as he slid across the crease going post to post. He went post to post. We're going to commercial. 5.15 to go. Here in the third. This one far from over. 3-1 Canadians. The Flyers are on the move. Will it be enough? Rod Brindamore with a nice pass to Chris Gratton, who had just beaten his check by half a stride. Didn't get all of it, but that was certainly headed for their bottom right corner. Nice save by Andy Moog. So the Flyers are starting to mount some pressure. A two-goal lead is still pretty dangerous. Andy Moog experienced enough to know that. The Flyers have cranked it up, but they've only got a little over five minutes to do it. Face off to the left of Moog. Shots are 29-22 Philadelphia. Again, in case you're joining us late, Flyers, a huge power play advantage. They've had six opportunities, 0 for 6, while the Canadiens just have had one chance with the man advantage. And yet Montreal has the lead, 3 to 1. Desjardins is back for it. No surprise that Leclerc scores against Montreal. He continues to torture his former team, as we showed <laughs> he earlier. Torture's a good word. But it might not matter tonight. In a two-goal game, under five to go now. Again, missing person report out on Alexander Day. Not getting a whole lot of ice time here in this hockey game. After being on ice for a goal against in that second period. Brunet will throw in. Need him a back four. And here's Eric Lindros at center. Lindros rips one. High over the net and over Andy Moog, which is not hard to do because Andy Moog is 5'8. That shot might have been so hard, might have broken one of the panes of glass back behind the Montreal net. Giveaway! Savage! Fake shot it wide! Cut it a little too fine. Brian Savage looking for a second of the period. And Yanni Nienema was scrambling as fast as he could to get from the corner. He's the one who had thrown the puck diagonally inside your own zone. You're not supposed to do that ever unless you're absolutely sure. And even then, it's not a good idea. He got burned, and Savage almost made him pay the ultimate price for it. 3.45 to go in regulation. Here's Terrian now. Chris Terrian in across the line. Mo coolly and calmly steers that one aside. Comes out to center. Canadians would have had a break, but they're unable to get to it. Terry and back the other way. Let's it go. Pad save, just no problem for Moe. Patrick Poulin will just flip it out the center. Won't go far enough for icing. We're coming up on 3.15 left here in the third. Brindamore at center. Little pass for Gret. There's Gret in across the line. Sneaky shot. But it goes wide of the net. Flyers unable to hold the zone. It comes back into the Philadelphia zone. Montreal still doing a really good job inside their own end. Philadelphia makes some contact. They turn pucks over, but they're not able to sustain it and make plays out of it very often. Montreal has gotten to lose pucks extremely well. Side of the net. Forbes has for the Flyers. Back behind for Gratton. Score! On the wraparound! It's Chris Gratton! And all of a sudden, it's a one-goal game. Chris Gratton has gotten them back in reach. A stunner is the best way to describe this one for everybody. And the Montreal Canadiens truly look stunned. All the players after the goal, quick wrap around. It went off the sh shaft of the stick of Stefan Quintal. Changed direction on Andy Moog and went up and over. Oh, sorry, went in between the legs of Andy Moog. On the first angle, you can clearly see, though, that it changed direction. 
by Stefan Quintal's stick. The first one actually went in off Stefan Quintal, but all of the Canadians on the ice after that goal scored by Chris Gratton stood around in a little bit of shock. It's a 3-2 game now for Montreal. That, the broken glass we told you about, off Eric Lindros's shot. Maybe not serious enough to repair it, although I wouldn't want to be sitting behind a pane of broken glass. Five, 17 minutes, 17 seconds. Maybe they will take some time to fix it. Timeout on the ice. This one now far from over. It's a one goal game. 2.43 to go here in the third. Canadians by one as they replace the glass behind the Montreal net. Our Coors Light storyline tonight. Mark Recchi scores against his former team. John McClare scored against his former team. But Chris Gratton now, 33 points in his last 35 games, starting to pick it up. And here's the Coors Light replay. Here's Lindros on the fly. This is what actually broke the pane of glass. He gets a pretty good rip at that one, but sometimes there's some weak places in the glass and the splinters. And this is the Gratton goal. He'll get the puck behind and out, net, come out on the wraparound, and watch five red. He does get his stick on it. That changes the direction. It fooled Andy Moe, and this bit broke the pane of glass, hurt the Flyers. I mean, they were just getting momentum. They've scored, scored two quick goals, and they had to sit on the side and wait for that pane of glass to get fixed. Now let's see if they can get it back cranked up again. They got one more goal to get. Those who have remained have been rewarded with a hockey game. And the potential for one of those fantastic finishes. 3-2 Montreal over Philadelphia. Bratton, his 13th from Forbes. Even strength at 17-17. Lindros, the hard hit behind the net. Sends the player in red down to the ice. And this is the most excitement we have felt in the building all night. Here's a chance. Shot stopped. Niedema had a great chance. Moog robbed him. Puck is still loose. And now a whistle. Hard to hear the whistle over this crowd that is on their feet here. What an opportunity to tie up this game by Yanni Nienema and Philadelphia. This would have been an interesting play because John LeClaire had been pushed into the back of the net. The net had been flipped up and hit Andy Moog in the back. That's what he's talking to Bill McCurry about. He's patting him on the back too and telling him. Meanwhile, the puck was back out at the point and a terrific scoring chance from the Flyers, but the Flyers come away empty. And the Flyers also a little upset because they felt play should have gone on and rightly so the curry had lost sight of the puck and the whistle went watch the play develop there's the shot from the point the puck is you can just see it barely wiggling back and forth there it had just settled back down Andy Moog settling down and making the save that last shot went off the side of the net the whistle had already gone but you can clearly see the puck was still free Results of our Sports Zone poll tonight. Two gentlemen facing Andy Moog. And look at this. Wow. I think that's a surprise. We asked you which player is more valuable to the Flyers. It was close. About 4,000 of you voted. And John LeClaire gets the slight edge over Eric Lindros. Well, goals mean an awful lot. People like to see goals scored, and certainly that's what counts in the scoreboard a lot. Eric Lindros does a lot for you. He does it with the body. He scores goals as well. John LeClaire would be the first to say that Eric and I are at least even, if not Eric being ahead. And I'm sure that Eric would say the same thing about LeClaire. They're their, their own best supporters. So I think that uh, doesn't really matter how it comes out, but it's interesting how the vote went. That's why we didn't ask them, and we asked you instead. There you see all Philadelphia in the last eight minutes, and really the entire third period here. Shots on goal in the third are 18-6 Philadelphia. Three to one. Here's Rachinsky. He's ridden off by LeClaire, and Hextall plays it out to center. The crowd always enjoys that. Two minutes left in the third. Turned out to be a dandy from Philadelphia. Glad you could be with us on this Thursday night here on the Deuce. Needham up off his back foot, shot it wide. Brisebois back behind the net. See if the Canadiens crumble. Needham has it center. He'll wait. Pass hopped over the stick of Lindros. Delayed offside. Breezebois taking his sweet time in the Montreal zone. Here's Dave Manson now. He opened the scoring in the first period. 90 seconds left regulation. Terry and fires in. And the Flyers unable to keep it. Strange carom. And it comes all the way down to the Philadelphia zone. Montreal's been really effective this whole game in getting to loose pucks and getting them out of the zone. They really are going to have to do it in this last minute and 10 seconds. 
Here's a chance. Desjardins gets to it and throws in. Mogul play it there for Stefan Quintal. Both of the flyer goals have gone in off Quintal, off his body, off his stick. He's blocked a number of shots tonight. It's been a rugged all-around night for Stefan Quintal. That's him knocking the puck out of midair, and he's able to get it out of the zone. Good play there. Here come the Canadians with an offensive chance. Haven't seen this much in the third. Ruchinski's shot. Stopped by Hextall. Look behind him. And it's behind the net, not in the net. Ruchinski has. Centering pass. That was deflected off Desjardins. Final 40 seconds of regulation. And it bounces out the center. Quintal has. He'll throw in. Brindamore is there to get to it. Off for Svoboda. Rolled off of Lindros' stick back the other way to the Philadelphia zone. Hextall is out. Extra attacker is on. Here's Leclerc. Try to throw it in. It was blocked. Dampus with the empty net. That shot was blocked. Inside the flyer zone with 12 seconds left. Philadelphia has to hurry. Seven seconds left. Leclerc will just throw in. Five seconds left. Malakov has. Flips it up the middle of the ice. And that will do it. A little dance, bit of a jig there by Andy Moog. As Moog and Montreal come into Philadelphia, open up a 3-0 lead and hang on to beat the Flyers 3-2. A well-deserved jig there by Andy Moog. Montreal doesn't beat Philadelphia very often, especially in this building. They had to hang on by the skin of their teeth, but give them a lot of credit. They established their game plan from the very beginning. They took it to Philadelphia, got them back on their heels, and then proved they could play a defensive game as well. And without two of their biggest stars in their lineup, this is a tremendous win for Montreal. Montreal's first win here in Philadelphia since October 24th, 1992. Our next game here on ESPN2, worth staying up late night, Monday, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Rangers and the San Jose Sharks. The Canadians defeat the Flyers 3-2. This has been a presentation of ESPN2, the worldwide leader in sports. NHL tonight is coming up next. Bill Pito and Barry Melrose. Brian, Al, and I are back to wrap this one up.